Many years ago, in a kingdom far from here, there lived a beautiful princess with inky, silky black hair, smooth, creamy skin, and luscious red lips. She was, the, she was the king's only daughter, and she was beautiful, and giving, and kind, and vain. She had her whole life been hailed as the most beautiful woman in all the land. Who could blame her then if she spent a little too much time in front of her mirror each day? One day, when she was nearly 20, she was married off to the widower king of a nearby nation. In addition to her dowry and her gowns, she brought one thing, the large gilded mirror that hung in her chambers. Now the widower king had a young daughter. And when our princess became queen, he had the daughter sent off to, to be tutored. She was not unnecessarily cruel to her stepdaughter, but she knew that a child of her own must inherit in order to form a lasting alliance between her old kingdom and her new. Well, many years passed, and the young girl grew into a young woman, and the queen could no longer contrive to keep her from court. Worse, she had yet to bear a healthy child. She knew that if she did not have a child soon, her stepdaughter wouldn't hurt. She became obsessed with the idea that somehow, somehow, her stepdaughter had, had stolen the life from her womb and had therefore stolen the lands and titles that were rightfully hers. Her children's, that is. One day, she overheard two courtiers speaking about this princess, and they referred to her as the most beautiful woman in all the lands. And the queen, horrified by this new theft, for so she saw it, called the girl to her chambers that night and bade her stand beside her in front of her mirror. To her horror, the mirror told her that while her own hair had begun to gray and gone dull, the girl's hair was still silky and black as ebony, while her own skin had grown rough and chapped. The girl's skin was still smooth and white as freshly fallen snow, while her own lips had lost their color and begun to chap, the girl's lips were still soft and red as blood. She sent the girl from her and immediately called the kingdom's, hunts, the kingdom's best huntsman to her. She bade him take the girl out into the woods to a remote spot and kill her. As proof that she is dead, bring her heart back to me. The next day, the girl vanished and the queen cooked and ate the heart that the huntsman brought her. Convinced that this would restore her youth and her beauty, having stolen it back from the young princess. But to her horror, when she looked in the mirror again, she was no younger and no more beautiful than she had been the night before. Enraged, she confronted the huntsman. So keen was her anger, so mad the gleam in her eye, the huntsman confessed everything. Unwilling to kill the beautiful princess, he had gone to the king and told him of the queen's plot. The king, in turn, had sent the girl away to a nearby kingdom with an escort of seven minor courtiers. The queen was overtaken by a dreadful calm. She left the huntsman and traveled directly into town, where she traded a fine piece of jewelry for the dress of a peasant woman's back. She smeared her hands and face with dirt and traded another piece of jewelry for a sweet red looking apple from the apothecary. Thus equipped, she traveled to the kingdom in which she knew her stepdaughter must be hidden. And when she arrived there, what luck? to find it a market deck. And luckier still, there was her stepdaughter, browsing a stall full of selling stay laces and combs. In her disguise, she approached the girl. Are you alone in the market? I am. What is it you want, old woman? 
creature as wretched and wrinkled as you? Have you come from a hand for a hand meow from the pretty princess? No, bristled the queen, the witch, the hag. In fact, I've come to give you some. And here she produced the apothecary's apple. I'm not hungry. Oh, just a bite. Just one bite of my wares and you'll never want of another. Just one bite is all it takes. The girl seemed wary, but finally agreed. If you take a bite first, then I'll try a bite of your apple. And so the hag bit into the apple, taking a small piece into her mouth. But, clever woman that she was, she tucked the apple close into the side of her mouth and was careful not to sit to swallow even a single drop of its juice. Emboldened, the girl took the apple and bit into it with a satisfying crunch. And when she had swallowed her bite, she sneered at the old woman. This apple is nothing to brag about. Why, it's, it's mealy and bitter and... <laughs> Cackling, as only the truly mad can, the queen left the market and the nation's capital and headed directly back to her own home. Convinced that she was rid of the girl once and for all, she lived happily for many months. Until one day, a messenger from the neighboring kingdom arrived, announcing the impending wedding of his prince and the queen's own stepdaughter. The queen was overcome with the, an irrational fear of her stepdaughter. The girl seemed suddenly immortal, immune to all her attacks. Yeah. A more rational woman might have thought that she was treated by the apothecary or that the other kingdom had better doctors and medicines, but the uh, queen was too far gone in her hate for that. For days, her advisors tried to convince her to attend the wedding feast to make peace with her stepdaughter. The queen refused. And at last, they, they pleaded with her, begged, send some token, send some gift as a token of your well wishes. Yes. Yes, send her the gilded mirror hanging in my chambers as a token of my wishes for her. And Snow White, for surely you have surmised the princess's name by now. Snow White, for her part, saw the gift of the mirror as her final triumph over the vain and wicked queen. She hung it prominently in her chambers, where she consulted it each morning for perhaps a little longer than was entirely 